There's a hundred thousand streets in the city. You don't need to know the route. You give me a time and a place. I give you a five minute window. Anything happens in that five minutes and I'm yours, no matter what. Anything happens a minute either side of that and you're on your own. Do you understand? Good. You won't be able to reach me on this phone again. Hello YouTubers, my name is Frederick Lopez and in anticipation for Baby Driver releasing in theaters this week, I decided to go over my brief review and thoughts of the 2011 film Drive, starring Ryan Gosling, Carey Mulligan, Brian Cranston, Albert Brooks, Oscar Isaac, and Ron Perlman. It is directed by Nicholas Ryden Refn, and it's based off a novel. This is actually one of the few films, probably the only film, where Nicholas Ryden Refn directs it without writing the script. Somebody else wrote the script, and it was based off previous source material. So yeah, what is Drive about? Well, Drive is one of those rare, kind of like independent movies. Um, it has a cult following, including myself. And I'm not going to give too much uh, away for this film. I'm not going to give away too many spoilers, but uh, it's an independent movie. It was advertised as an action movie, and people were kind of disappointed. They wanted more action. It's more of a drama independent film, really. But it's a film that's entirely on its own. It's very stylistic. Um, to describe it, Ryan Gosling pretty much plays a stunt driver by day, and uh, a driver by night, and by driver I mean he basically rides getaway cars for bank robbers and stuff. He works at a garage as well with Brian Cranston and they're partnered together. He offers him gigs with stunt driving and they fix cars up for movies while also providing cars for a different type of criminal activity, different type of jobs, whether it be robberies, getaway cars, you name it. So he's just that type of person. We don't know his name, he's just referred to as the driver. And this is a very different role for Ryan Gosling. He's very quiet. He doesn't have that much dialogue, but there's a lot being done with expressions. And uh, through the course of this, he ends up falling in love with his next door uh, neighbor. He's in an apartment complex, and uh, in the next room across from him is a woman named Irene, played by Carrie Mulligan. She is a single mother, and uh, they kind of get to know each other, and uh, he helps her out. He helps her out with her kid, and they go out. He also helps her with her car, and he was kind of aware of her, and she was aware of him earlier in the movie, but a certain set of events causes them to meet and eventually date for a little bit until Oscar Isaac gets into the picture. Carrie Mulligan's husband, Irene's husband, is an ex-convict who gets out of jail, and uh, he's there to support her and her husband. Uh, along the way. He doesn't like it. He's very conflicted. He's not a person who really talks to many people besides his boss and other people. He's kind of an introvert. He's really out there. He's this type of person who's kind, generous, yet there's something deep and evil underneath him, something waiting to come out. And I guess it's the thrill of driving that keeps him going. He works as a stunt driver, he works as a mechanic, but he really loves driving at night with different jobs and everything. But um, basically to make a long story short, Oscar Isaac owes money to some people and they keep harassing him and his son. They threaten his son. And Ryan Gosling doesn't like that. The driver offers to help him get out of his debt and uh, stop them harassing him because he doesn't want to see any harm done to the kid or even worse, Irene. And that's where a crazy set of events occurs in the movie. He gets deeper and deeper into trouble and just Crazy things happen. I'm not going to get too much into spoilers here, but if you have not seen Drive, I would highly recommend it. And uh, for spoilers, that's all you really need to know. There's more to the film than what I just described, but uh, you also have Albert Brooks play a mob boss with his brother, played by uh, Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman pretty much does the usual job. Uh, he ends up getting the role basically by saying he's a acting like a Jewish guy who wants to be an Italian gangster and he says I'm a Jewish boy from New York so he pretty much kinda put himself into the role there he does a good job and Brian Cranston was the first actor to be uh, in the project um, Nicholas Ryder Refn was a fan of Breaking Bad and wanted him there he had a lot of input a lot of ad-libbing done Ryan Gosling actually replaced Hugh Jackman for the role which I'm glad because this is uh, one of Ryan Gosling's best roles one of my favorites as well 
Carrie Mulligan does a great job. Such a fantastic hairdo. I want to meet a girl like that. Like, seriously, she does such a great job as Irene. And uh, I really thought she was American. I didn't know she had an accent. I thought she, her American accent was her natural accent. She does a great job acting. Oscar Isaac is good as a boyfriend, but really, Albert Brooks, holy shit, as the villain. This is one of his darkest, one of his best roles. I would not expect the guy from the in-laws. I wouldn't expect him to be this mean gangster, and boy, does he do a good job. He surprised me in this movie. It's almost like he had a lot of repression just let out through this role, and it's a shame that he was not nominated for the Oscars, or this film was. Ides of March was nominated, and I really feel like this film was a better film. That being said, the pros soundtrack is amazing. It opens up with Night Call by Kavitsky, and you have Real Human Beings, so many other songs that you hear on car commercials and stuff now. And as well, you also have a brilliant, brilliant cinematography and action. Now, there is a very limited amount of action scenes, but the stuff that does have actions, the scenes that do have action, are very well done, very real, and very steady. And that's one thing I respect. It's not shaky cam. It is shot very well. And as a matter of fact, the whole film is shot extremely well. The cinematography is breathtaking, beautiful. The way it opens up with that police chase, helicopter chase, the downtown uh, Los Angeles area, that area is just so vibrant. And it's kind of like a throwback to the 80s. The aesthetic of it is just so euphoric in a way. I can't describe it. As a filmmaker myself, I'm just in love with this film. Very few films where I actually enjoy, but also I actually picked up on the cinematography. It is so well done that it actually takes notice to itself. I actually pay attention to how everything looks. I can watch this with the sound off and it would still look like a beautiful film. This is a work of art. I love the framing, just everything from the set design and everything. And it's just shot on real locations, it's real. But it creates such a vibrant feel that makes it feel otherworldly, very 80s like music video. I don't know, I haven't really seen too many movies like this. I've seen some independent short films that have been like this, but really this, this film has a style on its own. And a lot of that's to Nicholas Redden reference type of eye, uh, type of uh, way of shooting and filming. And with a good story written here, it really uh, puts two and two together into something beautiful. And I like the performances. Everybody does a fantastic job. Everybody is cast so well to their roles. I mean, for me personally, I wasn't expecting much. I wanted to see this when it came out. I heard a lot of buzz. It was independent. didn't come out in my area. And I didn't see this film until I saw it on Netflix when it came out, like in 2011. I might have saw it in 2012, maybe spring. Anyway, I fell in love with this film, not only as a viewer, but as a filmmaker myself, it inspired me. It's just like, wow, that was a movie I did not know I, that I wanted to see. You know, there's some movies that you want to see that look good, and you're like, I want to see that. There's others where you're not sure. There's others where you hear a buzz, you just put something on, and you see it, and you don't realize that you wanted to see this film. That's what this is like to me. I love the story. I love the set of events. And ultimately, it does kind of have a bit of an ambiguous ending. There's a definite ending, but uh, I say it really does leave it open to interpretation for what may have happened at the end. But not in a bad way, more of like it could go either way, really. But uh, Brian Cranston's great, Carrie Mulligan, Albert Brooks knocks it out of the park, Ryan Gosling, this is one of my favorite roles of his, very underrated. And he has minimal dialogue in the way that, like, Mel Gibson was Max Rockatansky or Kurt Russell in Soldier. Ryan Gosling has that all-around element to him that's just very uneasy, very nervous, yet he's almost like a lion in a cage. And when he does go crazy, he goes absolutely freaking nuts in this movie towards people. And you really get to know more about his character. Everything's almost a cover to what he is and what world surrounds himself at night. Drive is an excellent movie. And oh, let's not forget the Scorpion jacket. It's such an iconic jacket, man. That's a jacket defined for cosplaying or just wearing around. Ultimately, this movie makes me want to get some Kavinsky, play some Night Call, drive around at night, and just, just to drive around at night. Like, this movie is awesome. So what do I give Drive? I give Drive a 5 out of 5. This is a work of art. One of my favorite Nicholas Ryden Refn films. One of my favorite Ryan Gosling films. And it is a very underrated film. Some may say it's overrated, but it depends on expectations. Ultimately, if you're looking for like a Fast and the Furious, heist, car chase type of action movie, you're not going to find it here. If you're looking for a good story with dramatic moments that has an indie 
feel to it with some nice kind of like 80s aesthetic and uh, well shot action scenes when they do arrive then you will definitely love Drive. Basically if you're a hardcore Ryan Gosling fan or maybe like a filmmaker or just a person who loves independent films, good stories, you're gonna like this. It's not gonna be for those looking for a popcorn movie. No, this is a drama and it was based on a book. I want to read the book. I haven't read the book yet, but yeah, a five out of five. I just wanted to bring my brief thoughts and review to the 2011 film Drive before I see Baby Driver this week. Two completely different films, but for some reason it made me think of this. So, on that note, if you have not seen Drive, I would highly recommend checking it out. And if you have seen Drive, you know how special it is, or maybe not. Let me know if you liked it, did you hate it, what's your favorite moment of Drive? I love the real human being part. And go see the real human being spoof. It's very funny. But yeah, I like the beginning part with Night Call, a real human being. But ultimately, my favorite moment is probably the beginning car chase where he's getting away from the police and the helicopters. That's just so intense. But I just love all of this movie. This is my one of my favorite films of the past decade. Definitely. One of my favorite films of all time. So yeah, let me know. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What's your favorite moment? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, click the like button, comment, and subscribe for more videos. You can go ahead and check out my retrospective reviews of the Batman trilogy with Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever. And stay tuned this week for my movie review of Baby Driver. Also, I have a new top 10, or should I say top 15 list of my favorite Mel Gibson performances. Anyways, that is all. See Drive, and uh, if you have, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Have a great day.